So, like I was saying, we've all been there. Not necessarily a good place. The time in which we don't like ourselves so much, we don't really believe in the things that we can do, even if we know that it's something that we're good at. And I'll admit, I'm one of those people sometimes. Sometimes I not, I'm not confident in the things that I know I can do. And it's, it's something that we can work on solving. Self-esteem is, I believe, a vital part of who we are. You have to go through life, you have to be able to know that you can do certain things and yeah. perform when need be. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how to reestablish your self-esteem if you've lost it. And if you have it, how to keep it high. Now, before we get into the actual, like, how to do this, there are a couple of prerequisites. And if there's one thing I know you're all familiar with, it's prerequisites. <laughs> Starting with school system. And the first one is to relax. The first thing you have to do, especially right now if you're talking to all of you, is to calm down. Now, there are a couple things I do to relax when I know that I'm feeling overwhelmed, whether it be with academic obligations or extracurricular activities or anything. There are certain things that I do. For example, I listen to certain songs that I don't have a calming effect on me. I try to write a little bit of song on the guitar. I like to play music. Or I will go for a walk with my friends, most likely to go get food somewhere. And it doesn't have to specifically be those things. We each have our things to do that we like to we each have our things that we like to do to calm down and to relax. And the second prerequisite is the harder of the two. I think that when you're working on reestablishing your self-esteem, you need to try to find out why your self-esteem is low in the first place. And if you can, trace it back to the source of the problem and work on it from there. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor. The doctor can't just look at you and know what's wrong and give you medicine. He has to do all these tests so he can find the root of the problem and solve it from there. So, you have to go back, whether it be something that happened in your past, something that someone said to you, something something that someone says to you now, you have to try and find the root of the problem and work on it from there. And I understand that that's a difficult thing to do. It's one of the most difficult things somebody can ask someone else to do, is to relive a memory of something that's put a negative spell in their life, but it's necessary for this process to work. So now that we have the prerequisites out of the way, we can get to actually reestablishing yourself which I've decided to split up into three parts. The mental part, the social part, and the physical part. And the mental part is, well, the mental part is fairly simple. To reestablish your self-esteem mentally, I think we all need to take a moment and redefine ourselves. And there's one specific notion that I have in mind that applies to all of us here. It's that, well, we're all college students, and I would stress that you are not your grades. You're not. You are so much more than a bunch of letters ranging from A through F with some pluses and minuses on a piece of paper. You are your talent, you're your individuality, you're your intuition, you're your humanity. And you need to keep those things with you and make sure that you hold them close because that, that's what makes you who you are. Now for the social part of it is you need to make sure that you're surrounded by good people. And I use the term people and not friends because some of us may feel that we can't talk to our friends about certain things. That's your business, that's fine. But when I say surround yourself with good people, I mean that you make sure that you have someone in your life, whether it be parents, extended family, direct family, friends, cousins, anything like that that you can go to to talk to if you feel like you need to talk. It's important that we make sure that we have a core group of tolerant and understanding people around us to make us feel better when maybe we're not at home. And the last part of it is actually writing this, it sounds a little funny, but um, the last part is ties into kind of like what I felt when I came to Stony Brook. This is a really big campus. It's huge. It takes a while to get anywhere on campus, no matter where you go. So because the campus is so big, I think that that's kind of, in a way, a backward sign to explore. And when I say explore, I mean explore who you are, explore what makes you who you are and what you like to do. So when you're not feeling so great, you know, if you like bike riding, go for a bike ride, go for a walk. As soon as they open up the pool, go for a swim. You know, explore clubs, extracurricular activities you wouldn't necessarily do on or off campus. And just really get out and do things that make you happy. Because that's probably one of the most important aspects of this, is to make sure that you are happy. Before you worry about your friends and your family, by all means that's a, by all means, that's a wonderful thing to do, to care about your friends and your family. You need to make sure that you're okay yourself. You are at service to yourself, first and foremost. And um, so yeah, that would be the mental, social, 
and the physical aspect of reestablishing your self-esteem. I have one final point to make to, um, to kind of drive everything home. And it's definitely something that we've all heard before, but I'm going to try to put a new spin on it in the, if I can. Um, you need to love yourself. I truly believe that everybody in here has something that they're good at, that they should be confident that they can do, and that they can do in a way that is special. For, let's take me for example. Um, thinking off the top of my head, I'm good at music. Yeah. Um, what about you? Does anyone want to tell me what they're good at? I play clarinet. He plays clarinet. <laughs> Anybody else? Shocker. But, um, yeah, so we all have something that we're good at, and you may think, oh, I'm not as good as this person, I'm not as good as that person. You also need to throw that out the window. I understand that you may want to compare yourself to other people so that you have something to work for, but don't compare yourself to the point where it gets you down, like, oh, I'll never be as good as this person, I should just give up now. I find that very common in like writers and artists and musicians, it's a terrible feeling. And um, I would like to... I would um, like to actually close with a quote and really just encourage you to all go out and to just feel good about yourselves. Because if you think about it, most of it, I mean, it's a science university, so a lot of us, or some of us at least, are probably science majors. If you think about it scientifically, there are so many factors that go into making a human being who they are, you know, personality-wise and then like scientific-wise. So everyone is unique in their own way. And we cannot forget that. So when you don't feel good, when you feel like, oh, I can't do this, can't do anything right, behind on this, behind on that, everything's falling apart, just remember that you're special and that, for lack of a better term, simply put, you can do it. And I'd like to close with a quote. Um, Apologize not for the mistakes you make. You are everything you put into the world. The greatness and the weakness, the discoveries and the errors. So go forth and put greatness into the world, each and every one of you in your own special way.